please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please continue to stand as we have a moment of silence for our veterans. Reverend Rick? Yes. Oh. <laughs> for the invocation. Before we start, I always start this because of one of our Chicktawaga policemen is still going through um, hard times. He's down in Texas getting rehab. Uh, Officer Black Chief and his family, who was uh, hurt about six months ago, and we're still going to keep him in prayer, and for his family also going through this. And also, Dave, who always comes here, always has something to say, he's in Roswell. So, Father, as we come before you, Lord, we want to thank you for our police department, these men and women who put their lives on the line to keep us safe. We thank you for our fire department, Lord, to keep us safe. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for our board. And Father God, there's going to be things said tonight, might be a little hurtful, maybe a little eye-opening, but Lord God, they're going to hear from residents, and, and residents are going to hear from them. Lord, we pray, Father, there be peace here, and we ask your presence here, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Rick. Please be seated. Before we have the roll call, I, I did forget we need to come out of executive session that we came out at 6.55 p.m. Uh, Councilmember Adams Act, seconded by Councilmember Pilarski. All in favor to come out of executive session? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Madam Clerk, now we'll go to the regular board meeting and have a roll call, please. Councilmember Christine Adams Act? Here. Councilmember Linda Hammer? Here. Here. She is there. She said here. Uh, Councilmember Michael Jasinski. Here. Councilmember Gerald Kaminsky. Present. Councilmember Brian Nowak. Present. Councilmember Brian Flarski. Present. And Supervisor Diane Benchkowski. Here. Okay, seven present tonight. Um, we're going to add a portion to this agenda. Um, sometimes we have presentations. I did ask the Chief of Police, Brian Gould, to be here tonight to give us an update. Um, on police interaction um, with the asylum seekers. Thank you, Chief, for being here. Absolutely, uh, Madam Supervisor. Thank you for giving me a chance to present. Uh, I just uh, wanted to take this chance to present to the board and also to our citizens so that they understand exactly uh, the preparations that the police department have taken and uh, just to bring everybody up to speed on what we've seen so far regarding the asylum seekers who are staying in hotels within the town of Chictawaga. Uh, we, we learned, uh, as soon as we learned that there were going to be uh, asylum seekers placed here in Chictawaga, I made contact with representatives from the company called DocGo and also the New York City Mayor's Office so that if we had issues, we could reach out and uh, address any of the issues that are affecting the safety and security of the town of Chictawaga. Uh, that remains our utmost priority and, uh, you know, to date, we've had uh, very few interactions with asylum seekers. Our first interaction was on uh, July 16th, where an asylum seeker was arrested for shoplifting at the Walden Gallery Mall. Following that, we had two more arrests for shoplifting. Those two individuals who were arrested in the second incident uh, did return back to the mall and had to be escorted out. Since then, one of those individuals <coughs> did cause a disturbance at the hotel and he is no longer in the program. We communicated with the company that's operating and he has left the program. Uh, the company that is operating has assured me that if there's anybody that we interact with in a violent nature or is causing repeated problems in our community, that they will transport them back to New York City and remove them from their program. Uh, other than those uh, individuals, we've had a couple EMS call, medical calls involving people staying at the hotel. And uh, obviously you've seen the press release from the uh, uh, district attorney regarding the uh, rape first charge that was lodged against one of the asylum seekers who was arraigned on Friday about that. Um, that case was a, a known suspect to a known victim. It was domestic uh, in relation. It did not involve anybody from the public. Uh, it occurred in the room and the people, both the victim and the suspect, were traveling together. Uh, other than that, we have uh, 
I'm aware that there have been numerous complaints of residents saying that people are uh, approaching them, asking them if they need work. I've heard complaints of people sleeping on porches, sleeping on front lawns. My message to our community is that please, if this is happening and you see anything suspicious or you have anything concerning to contact our dispatch so that we can come and document it. If there are people who we have interacted with, the company that is, is sponsoring this program will help us to put an end to that. Uh, I did reach out to them because I've seen some of the comments. I've uh, received some emails from concerned residents. Uh, I've you know, asked them to address the fact that people are going around begging for money. People are going around asking uh, if, if they want any work done. And uh, again, my, my message is that if this is happening, we need to be notified. Uh, your police department, although uh, you know, we are a, a, you know, a busy department, we, we want to know. We don't want you to think that you're bothering us, that it's not important enough to call. So if, if any of our residents are interacting with anybody in the community, no matter where they're from, we ask if you see something suspicious, if you see something that makes you uncomfortable, that you're concerned about, please call our dispatch, our non-emergency number, 686-3501. If it's an emergency, call 911 and we will get there and we will investigate. It's very important that we're able to uh, legitimately track what's going on within our community and document what's going on. Thank you. Do um, any board members have any questions for the chief while he's here? Okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, public comment period. This is an opportunity for residents to comment on items appearing on the agenda of the town board meeting tonight. The public comment period should last 15 minutes maximum. Each speaker may speak only once, and each speaker shall be limited to a maximum of three minutes speaking time. Uh, Julie Koska. Good evening. I'm Julie Koska. I reside at 91 Susan Drive, Village at Pew Town, Chictawaga. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Diane Bajakowski, Madam Supervisor, Michael Jasinski, Council Member, for bringing about Resolution 9. I just returned from a 20-day trip to Utah where I was visiting friends, and before I left, I was well aware of several properties in the town of Chictawaga that were being used as housing camps for asylum seekers. The reason I'm here to speak about resolu Resolution 9 is I did not have a lot of opportunity to learn about it. I am still looking into it, but I can put the two pieces together that you're using these proper, well, these properties are being used by the owners of the hotel and the federal government in the state of New York as camps to house asylum seekers, which is breaking zoning laws that are set forth by the town of Chichawaga and the state of New York. By passing Resolution 9, the town board then gives our town attorney the ability to do what? Go to Mayor Adams and request that something different be done as far as placement of individuals. Is that correct? That's what I'd like to know. Yeah, does anybody want to answer, Julie? Don't all speak at once. I can find <laughs> out myself. Well, my, can you repeat that question again? My question is, by passing this resolution as a town board, if all are in favor, which, based on the gas resolution, I know how that goes, what will happen if this does pass? It will then go to the town attorney, which gives him the ability to, what, present this to be possibly litigated, like no, other places well, we, have done? So everybody understands we did amend the resolution slightly and added an extra paragraph in there that... Um, we are requesting the uh, supervising code enforcement officer to do an inspection of the three hotels. I mean, the basis for that resolution was, number one, to make sure that the, the asylum seekers are in a safe environment. Right. We don't know that. They never went ahead. Um, I assume that they have changed their use by um, and not going for a certificate of occupancy it, right. beyond me. I don't understand that, but we need the supervising code enforcement officer to do a thorough inspection to make sure the fire alarms are working, the smoke uh, detectors, everything, it, that they're in a safe environment. I and appreciate that. And then he's that. going to report back to the board, and then we'll have the option to vote after to that. To go after them, and that other um, last paragraph is in there for our town okay. attorney 
to proceed with legal action. Thank you. I appreciate that. So tonight we should not expect a vote from the town board on resolution number nine because you no, have we to will. sign. Okay. Yeah, there, it does say the, the whole okay. process. I appreciate your time. Thank you You're very welcome. much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next person is um, Crystal. Is it Crystal? Any, can anybody read this? No. Second. Yeah. Is there a crystal here that that signed up to speak? No. Main Street, Main Street it says. Chris, Could be. Yes, Chrissy. Yes. Chrissy. Okay. Sorry, Chrissy. It's Chrissy Casilio. <laughs> okay. Terrible handwriting. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you. Unfortunately, because county government has not stepped up and will not lead on this crisis, towns like Chitawaga are left to think outside the box to protect their residents. I commend this board on having the courage that our county executive hasn't shown in proposing this resolution. I support using all levers of government to quell this crisis and keep our community safe. I have been to almost every single town and city in Erie County over the past few months, and far and away, this issue is what comes up when I am speaking with the residents. The concerns are real and valid, and now Cheektowaga bears the burden. For months, the community has been asking for a safety plan to which we have been met with silence and indifference. Thank you for allowing me to speak today, but more importantly, thank you for prioritizing the best interests of your residents in Chitawaga. Thank you for showing courage on a subject where many of our leaders have failed. Thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, Gary Borak. Uh, you've all received a lot of material from me on these court cases, and you know that I support this resolution. I support it so that we have some leverage with the mayor, so that we can tell him, you either negotiate a, a resolution to this problem or we go to court and we solve it the way the other cases have. 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 local communities obtain temporary restraining orders using their zoning law and the violation of the homeless shelter law in New York State. Seven out or six out of those have survived. Four of them got terminated. One of them, for technical reasons, is probably going to be reinstituted as soon as the case comes back from the federal court. The federal judge has indicated he's sending the case back. It's a state issue. But let's go over what Orangetown, the court in Orangetown said, because it tracks our town significantly. In that case, the hotel made the argument, oh, we're just, we're not changing the use. We're still a hotel, just like we always were. Here's what the judge said. The court disagrees. The evidence adduced by Orangetown makes a compelling showing in support of the notion that the hotel will house individuals beyond 30 days, thereby rendering those individuals more permanent than transient and taking the hotel outside of the Orangetown uh, code of hotel, citing not only the Orangetown code, but the New York State building code citing the provisions in the building code and the definition of occupancy. So we have a judge in Orangetown finding that this changes the occupancy of the hotel. No question about it. Now let's look at that Orangetown hotel code. A multiple dwelling used primarily for the purpose of furnishing lodging with or without meals for more than 15 transient guests. What's our code say? A building or group of buildings used as individual sleeping or dwelling units designed primarily for transient travelers. They are equivalent. That judge in Orangetown would have said that this is a change, that at least the uh, Dingen Street Hotel is a change in its use. I don't know about the other two, but we know the Dingen Street Hotel is no longer a hotel. It's a homeless shelter. And under New York State regulations, there's a provision for qualifying for homeless shelters, a whole list of things you gotta go through. But one of the things New York State thought about was, 
what if homeless people go stay in a hotel? Does that make it a homeless shelter? New York State said, well, it does, unless it's not used primarily by the homeless. Dingen Street is being used primarily by the homeless. New York State law, court cases, our own code, that's a homeless shelter. And we need to tell the mayor he can't just come to the town of Cheektowaga and put a homeless shelter wherever he likes. There's a process he could have gone through. He could have called y'all and said, I want to sit down and talk about this. I'm not against, call them illegals if you want, I'm not against immigrants of any sort coming here. I think we should provide temporary housing for asylum seekers. But they got to do it within the context of our law and New York State law. We don't take resident Canadian geese to the, the parks in New York and let them go. He can't just come here and establish homeless shelters as he pleases. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Um, next is um, Sandy Prisvalat. Hi. Um, I'm here to uh, request that the 2023-444 resolution be pulled from the consent agenda and uh, a discussion and vote held. Um, aside from the consent agenda, I didn't want it to be lumped in with that. And, and I have another comment. I thought that our public comment period was for residents of Cheektowaga, the town of Cheektowaga. It's not, no, okay. it doesn't state that. I'm mistaken then. Okay. I apologize for asking. That's okay, no Thank problem. You. Thanks. Okay, um, there are, is nobody else has signed up. Would anybody else like to speak before I close the public comment period? You, you're welcome to speak, sir. Yes, can you come up and sign the sheet? Oh, Ma'am, I'm sorry. I couldn't tell I saw your hand. Come on, you wanna speak? <laughs> oh, you, yeah, we can, we're having the second one, but you can sign this one too. Okay. It, it's about agenda items. Can you just sign this? Well, then, okay, so it'll be after the meeting. Okay, okay. so this, this one is about agenda items only. Okay, then I will call this public comment period to a close and we will move on to the consent agenda. Tonight we have a consent agenda as part of this meeting. If any council member wishes to remove an item for discussion, please tell me now and I will remove the item from the consent agenda and will be added as a separate resolution item. Okay, I need a motion to approve the meeting agenda as presented. Council member uh, Noack, seconded by council member uh, Adams Act. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Madam Clerk. I have a motion by Supervisor Benchkowski, a second by council member Adams Act to approve all items on the consent agenda, including the meeting minutes of July 25th, 2023, and resolution items 2023-436 through 449. Um, we will recognize that resolution 2023-444 was amended at the work session. Um, I need a roll call vote to approve the consent agenda items. Council member Adamsack? Yes. Council member Hammer? She said yes. Council member Jasinski? Yes. Council member Kaminsky? Yes. Council member Nowak? Yes. Council member Pilarski? Yes. Supervisor Benchkowski? Yes. All items on the consent agenda were approved. We have no further resolution items and nothing under suspension of rules. Um, my office did receive departmental communications. I received minutes from the planning board of October 13th, 2022, November 10th, 2022, December 8th, 2022, January 12th, 2023, February 8th, 2023, March 9th, 2023, and May 11th, 2023. Minutes were also received from the Traffic Safety Commission of July 18th, 2023, and the Supervisor's Statement of Funds for February and March. Um, additional notices, general communications received was one complaint, 23 notices of petition, and one notice of judgment. Okay. Uh, supervisor's comments. I, I would like to comment on um, resolution 444 tonight. Um, I, I received a um, email 
from a resident, uh, I think last week Friday, and I tried to get some answers um, for the resident. I'm not sure they're here, but hopefully they're, they're listening tonight. Um, she said, below is a list of questions that we expect answers to re regarding the hotel on Dingen Street. How many asylum seekers are being housed at the Best Western on Dingen Street? What is the head count breakdown? Uh, we got some of that information, but it's not as detailed as we'd like. Uh, there's approximately 226 total, um, and we figured out there were 70 children and 156 adults. Who is responsible for these people? Was the next question. When we have issues, who can we call directly that will address the issues? I, I told them my answer would be um, contact the non-emergency police dispatch phone number because we need a record of complaints. If you can contact the police, if you have any issues, they're, they're well aware, and uh, this is a directive from the uh, chief of police. So the phone number, if you want to write it down, is 716-686-3501. 686-3501. What is the long-term plan for the asylum seekers? Well, I had sent an email last week and uh, to the DOCGO, which is the subcontractor for, um, that has the agreement with the Dingen Street Hotel and the New York State uh, Mayor on Friday. And I really did not get much of an answer. Well, actually, I do. I, I, I did receive something today. Hold on. I'm just trying to find it in my notes here they answered some of the questions so she um, answered how this is from his assistant at New, in New York City how long uh, will the New York City pay for the assignment seekers the city of New York is paying for housing, transportation, laundry, food, and casework support while they are housed there. Local nonprofits are providing ESL classes, coordinating donations, and offering other supports. Then uh, they, I had asked the question, what is the exit strategy, especially once the funding runs out? We know the funding is going to run out, right? Asylum seekers want to work, so we will welcome your leadership and advocacy to the federal government to support expediting work authorization so they can start a path to independence. In addition, we welcome your support by calling the federal government to declare a federal emergency to unlock additional resources. And that includes you. If you want to call your federal representative and ask him to declare a federal emergency so we can unlock these additional resources, that would probably help. And I will do the same, and I'm asking my board members to do the same. I, need a li uh, I said I needed a list of the asylum seekers. They said we cannot share names due to privacy concerns, but they gave us the, uh, those vague numbers of the people that were in the hotel on Dingens. I also asked the date they submitted their application for asylum because they only have 12 months to submit the application. And she said each asylum seeker is in a different place in their immigration journey. Some have applied for asylum. Some have secured temporary work authorization. Most have not filed for asylum yet. We are working with local legal services providers to provide <coughs> legal assistance to asylum seekers. And I asked about the qualifications or is the person qualified considered qualified or is the person an undocumented person? We understand that the, this the answer was, we understand that the asylum seekers were paroled by the federal government at the border to enter the country until they file their asylum application, which was my question before that. The next question was, as you know, school is starting in a few weeks. We need to know how many school age children are here. Right? We have all these school districts. Um, they answered, we are working with New York State 
Education Department to determine the best places for ELL students, which is English as a second language, to attend school and will follow their guidance. I asked about, again about the asylum seekers, how many are there? I think I answered that before at the Dingen Street. What is the long-term plan of these asylum seekers? They are granted asylum, where do they go after that? If they are granted asylum, they would have work authorization and be like anyone else living in our country. How exactly, how exactly the question was, how long will the asylum seekers be housed at the Best Western? Is this temporary? The hotel is meant as temporary housing as asylum seekers get on their feet, but they didn't tell me how long that would be. Why is the town of Chikawaga the only housing ho town hosting asylum seekers? They said, well, New York City is hosting almost 60,000 asylum seekers in the city system, and we have run out of room to house most. There are approximately 1,800 asylum seekers currently placed in six New York State counties. Um, the other question was, have they been vaccinated? All asylum seekers are offered medical care and vaccination as part of intake in New York City. Exactly what uh, counties are these asylum seekers from or countries? And New York City has welcomed more than 100,000 people from all over the world. Um, languages include Spanish, Arabic, Turkish, Russian, Ukrainian, Ar um, Arabic again. So they're still providing the services to uh, the asylum seekers. So I hope that answered some of the questions that the, I know the uh, residents in the neighborhood off Dingens had wanted some of these answers and I, I will s respond and send you these answers um, to these questions. I also have um, my own notes that I wanted to pass along to everyone regarding this resolution that we passed. Um, the reason that I feel I had submitted this resolution with Council Member Jasinski, he may want to comment on himself, but I feel we needed to put the mayor of New York City on notice that we, the town of Chictawaga, is in control of our own town and that he needs to respect the Chictawaga town code. He either acts immediately to correct this unlawful act or we go to court. So I, I, I think it's just us taking control of the situation and not letting another mayor from another town telling us what to do. Uh, these asylum seekers are being sent here without resources and plans in place in this municipality to assist them on such short notice and without proper planning. In addition, safety concerns have been raised by this community based on the manner in which this determination to send these individuals was made in the specific location that was selected. A location that was selected without county or the town's involvement. These decisions are not the sort of uh, thing that can be made hastily and without significant planning between municipalities. Once an asylum seeker applies for asylum, they are legally here until their application is rejected, either orally or in writing, or accepted. So right now, we just have to be patient and, and uh, welcome the asylum seekers, but under our conditions and make sure everybody's following our laws and our uh, zoning um, code. I'm glad to see that the town board stuck together and voted yes on this resolution uh, the town council for the town of Orangetown acted together, and I'm glad to see that we all acted together. Um, the zoning codes are to protect the tenants in the homeless shelter. That was the real reason for this um, resolution. So I hope under, everybody understands that there are standards we require, and the town board is taking control of the situation, and we still have open communication with the New York City Mayor's Office and uh, DACO, which is the subcontractor that has contracted with the hotels. So with that being said, um, I will open it up to council member comments. All right, anybody else? Anybody else? Who? Council member Jasinski. 
So I think first and foremost, we need to put the people of Cheektowaga first when we consider anything. They're the taxpayers, they pay our salaries. I think that they have some legitimate concerns. We have seniors that live in our community that paid their house off 10 and 20 years ago that are being taxed out of their house. Um, call it as you may, it is putting a strain on our resources. We, we have, uh, we're one of the poorest cities in the nation. Cheektowaga's poverty rate is about maybe eight to nine percent. We are eliminating food banks for our veterans, but we have people that come to this country, and listen, that's why we all came here, let's face it. You know, we wanna be welcoming. We don't wanna turn anybody away, but we are a land of laws. There's a, there's a way of doing things, and, and my whole take on this is that we're not holding people accountable to follow the law, not only in this town, not only in this state, but in this nation. And I think we need to start listening to the people because at the end of the day, we're fronting the bill. I'm a taxpayer just like everybody else here. You know, th th we need to be proactive. The problem is, is we have ordinances that we need to be proactive. I encourage the board moving forward. We need to change our ordinances in order to protect the people of Cheektowaga first, and we need to put them first. We need to put our seniors first. We need to put everybody in this town first before we consider everybody else. If there's a person starving in this town, we need to consider them first. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, council member. Anybody else, council? Mm -hmm. Council member Polarski? Yeah, so um, I had a very lengthy conversation yesterday with New York City and Go, uh, Go the company managing and the lead agency for this operation. Um, many of the questions were answered the exact same way as the supervisor's email was, and some of it, you know, I felt was a little boilerplate, just saying, hey, ultimately, New York City's responsible for the asylum seekers, so kind of like skirted around the answers in that, but they did assure me that with the chief's recommendation, with my recommendation, that they are looking for an alternate hotel from the Best Western on Dingens. They understand the concerns. We share the same concerns as the town board. Um, as a resident, I, I was there, you know, I, I camped out for a little bit, a couple hours on that Wednesday after the town board meeting. I went the night of the town board meeting to address some of the concerns and see what it was. Asked for a manager numerous times, finally came in contact with a the manager there, and, and she was very open and receptive. Um, they were polite when I talked to them. You know, I shared the concerns about the loitering in front and all that. She said they would try their best to address it. There is a bench there that is stationed and, and you know, there. But I said, you know, pool items, you know, the pool chairs and the lawn chairs and stuff like that. So she's going to work on that. But ultimately, DocGo did assure that they are looking into an alternative uh, hotel or placement for them uh, outside of the Dingens location to move them to help improve the quality of life over there. There's definitely other concerns that the town board and myself, we share the crime. I mean, geez, this story that just came out the other day, um, in addition to some other issues, you know. Um, so we are on it, we are addressing the issues, um, and like the supervisor said, we're in communication with New York City, and hopefully we can figure this out together, because we find out information sometimes just a couple minutes before it hits social media. Um, we didn't know they were coming in until eight hours or less, you know, on the 13th, I want to say it was, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so. We're also left in the dark on some of it. We've received almost no correspondence from above, you know, whether it's county, state, and federal level on responses back. Um, but New York City has been in communication with us, at least with me, as of recently as Friday, or Monday, I'm sorry. Any other council members? Okay, I'll close this portion of the meeting and move on to public comments. Kind of. Thank you for getting there. <laughs> Thank you. Vicki Leader. Today, thankfully, my husband was home. I've had two illegal aliens, which is what they are, chase two of them away from my porch who are going through a box that I have there. Right there, right at my door. That's strike two. That's the second time I caught him on my property. What are the police gonna do? I'm gonna go make a report since I listened to the chief today. Um, last meeting I couldn't attend, but I listened to the meeting on YouTube. I watched it on YouTube. And the previous meeting before that, which is a month ago, 
you had many of us citizens voicing our concerns at the meeting, only to watch the next video in Mr. Polarski calling people racist. There was not one racist comment made at that meeting. They were legitimate concerns, and you looked like you were standing up for others other than your constituents here, which was appalling. Now, another thing with the illegals, they were offered medical treatment, offered vaccine. Mm -hmm. We all know how the COVID vaccine was pushed for all of us nurses to keep our jobs. Well, I left my job, so I didn't have to get it. There is active TB and E. coli at the Best Western on Genesee Street. I know everybody knows it, but our constituents do not. Mr. Polarski said he sees them all the time in Wegmans. Okay, if that were the measles or anything else, that would hit the news, that would hit everything. Now that, tuberculosis, I'm a nurse, I'd be happy to give an education about it. PPE is not work, it's a respirator. You're putting our police, our fire in danger, let alone our homes. I had mentioned before, we are armed. I don't need to be put in that position, nor do I want to be. I am up here to keep my husband, who is also a veteran, from coming up here and ripping the board apart. When are you gonna stand for us? Turn the damn buses around. We don't need this here. We are not the sanctuary city, that's New York. Turn them around and let them stay there. We have laws, we have codes. Look them up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Julie Casca. Hello again, I'd like to thank the town board for passing resolution number nine. After listening to the supervisor's comments, and you did a very good job diligently requesting questions, which I think a lot were dodged, offered. Well, I was offered the COVID vaccine every time I turned around, had it shoved at me, told me I was a concerned public safety, I was a scare and a threat to public health. I didn't get it, and that was my choice as a legal American. These individuals who are here seeking asylum should be required, especially if their children are going to school, to get everything that the children who are already here mm -hmm. are having to have in the pediatrician's office before more disease runs rampant, more than it is when I touch the same package of Pepsi, the same package of water that anybody from Genesee Street or Dingens is who may have come into contact with TB. I don't not need to give that to my father who could be on death's door with COPD. He's on oxygen 100% of the time. This is a public safety threat. If you thought COVID was bad and all those folks died, what's happening when this place runs rampant with that, potentially? We need to, like Vicki said, put our people first, tell Mayor Adams to take a hike, get the buses that were sent here overnight in the middle of the night through the federal government, New York City, Erie County Executive Poland cars under orders from, I'm not gonna call her her nickname, Governor Hochul, you were blindsided. This town board was blindsided. But the owner, and I won't mention his name because he was in the news for being so wonderful for revitalizing these hotels, is basically making money from the federal government and our backs essentially because they don't know how long it's gonna take to get these folks asylum. We don't have a timeline. Well, it's 12 months, but they didn't tell you anything concrete. So this could be eternity. We need to set forth what we can as a town within our legal limitations to make sure that we are safe as well. I am not saying I don't want them safe because they could be in potential danger without the vaccinations that we have. But we need to take a stand and do what's right for the town of Cheektowaga, anybody who comes into the town of Cheektowaga and New York State. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Okay, um, Joe, uh, yeah, you all right? Joe? Yeah. Okay. Well, I have Joe. 
Hello, how are you doing? Okay, this is my uh, third meeting and uh, still have the same concerns as the first two meetings. Up until this point, uh, what has anybody on the board heard from Kathy Holkel, Mark Polenkars about this situation? Uh, any communication? Has anybody heard one thing from our big people in New York? Did any communication come out like to uh, why Chicktawaga was like the, the I'm not gonna I, ex, excuse the dumping ground uh, factor, but Buffalo or any other suburb town, no. there's plenty of other areas and I it seems like we're singled out, okay? I did tell the, and I did send an email to Jocko on Sunday to let him know that there are plenty of other Erie County Right. Once again, I'd like to reiterate that uh, this uh, shelter, I guess now, not even a hotel, I know the sign has been taken down, we're right down the street. Uh, it's across from the Handicapped Kids School, the Falk School, Dingens Park, the playground, and a nearby bike path, okay? Uh, it's not a, good, not a good location. Today I also noticed emergency medical services trailer and tent set up alongside the uh, hotel. Uh, it's gonna probably affect where they play soccer and hockey at nighttime, but uh, I'd, I'd like to get some answers why medical services is set up again. Erie County Health Department was there probably about three weeks ago, and now another set up for God only knows what, uh, inoculations or whatever. Thought these people were supposed to be Ready to go, you know, I mean, uh, we got the TB scares, we got E. coli, just like some of the other uh, residents have mentioned, very concerning. Uh, are the hotels, are they up to date on their back taxes? We've heard some rumors and stories about that. I mean, they're going forward, taking money, hand over fish, probably whatever, they're getting pumped up with a lot of money. And, uh, are they up to date on their taxes? That should be a you know an answer you should be yeah, able to Yeah, I, I had checked and they were back, um, the one on Dingens was back their last tax bill, that was it. So they're on, on notice that they're back taxes. So hopefully we'll check it again and make sure they pay those. Okay, and uh, lastly, how does the, everyone here on the board feel about this being changed from hotel status to shelter status, possibly even, I don't even care about short term, long term, but just for any term, for one day. Mm -hmm. How does anybody feel about that? Any other council backyard? members? I'm answering all the questions. Is somebody else, council member? Well, Lansky? I'd like to get everybody's opinion all here. Right. We'll go down the line. I mean, what are, what's your opinion of this, Brian? Of this I, being called the shelter or take the people for a year, whatever it might be. The, the resolution we passed tonight, they're going to do an inspection of that. I want to see how the homeless shelter law reads. I haven't had a chance to read that yet, so I can't answer that question without reading that provision. Christine? Right now, we're probably looking at four or five weeks, I think, just in our corner. I don't know, I don't know about Genesee Street. Myself, um, I feel that we should be taking care of our homeless and our veterans first before we bring these seekers in. That's the way I feel. Okay. Gary. Well, you, you know what? I've watched this from day one, and I'll start from what I consider as the beginning, is who in the hell gave anybody a right just to arbitrarily ship people wherever they free, feel free to, uh, no matter what the consequences are? And per personally, we all got to look at Washington, D.C., where all this started. Absolutely. My understanding is right now there's something like 6.2 million immigrants in this country 
They can't count the getaways. They can't count the ones they can't uh, tr track anymore, the ones that never show up in court. And my feeling is that they're kind of using Chicktawaga for a dumping ground. New York City took these all on. We've got enough financial issues in this area, and everybody says New York City's paying for it. Are they really kidding about that? Don't, right. don't we all pay federal taxes? Exactly. It's coming out of every one of us pocket. And it's like, like I said, like every, everybody said, including Christine, we've got veterans, we've got homeless people. Where's the shelters for them? Okay. There's people living under bridges yet. No, and it's like I said, where does it end with the great American giveaway? Yep. And nobody will tell anybody what this is costing us. Yep. It's outrageous in my book. Yep. Mike? I think what really brings me some grave concern is that Cheektowaga has a problem, a crisis with the ambulance service. We're paying $88,000 for this service, and I asked the committee member, Mr. Nowak, where we are with it. I sent you an email several months ago asking for an itemized breakdown of what that $88,000 covers, and I've been yet to receive that. So, Mr. Nowak, could you speak to the people and tell us what that $88,000 consists of? I'll reply to your email in short order. <laughs> All right. Outside of having a public debate over here for the supervisor's seat, uh, I'll tell you my stance. Um, obviously, I share the same concerns. I, we spoke in length after the meeting. I think it was a productive meeting. I took a lot of notes from it. Hopefully, I, I responded back with some of the answers um, that you were looking for. We got the same ones as the supervisor did. Um, I don't think Dingens is a, is a good location. It's very residential. I mean, there's homes right directly across the street. Um, after seeing the asylum seekers out there, um, somewhere out there, I mean, when I was out there, there was numbers from two all the way to 13 people at one time, and that would fluctuate because sometimes they would get into a, a, a black band for their trainings or their programs that they were going to that DACO uh, manages and runs. So that number, you know, at the highest points was 13 when I was there, and I was only there a couple hours in the morning on Wednesday, and then I would drive by and that occasionally. So that Wednesday, they went to trainings and then fill out paperwork with DSS and all that stuff. So that's where they were going. So they were meeting for that bus. But there's still a loitering issue over there, which was addressed with the hotel. They share the same, you know, uh, DACO shares the same concerns. Not concerns, but they, they see our concerns and they're acting on it. So I, I don't think that is a good location for them. The town board was blindsided by it, um, whether you agree or disagree with the, the process. I mean, the whole thing was not transparent. Red flags go off when buses come in at night and you're told eight hours before. Totally understand that. My concerns, I'd like to base off facts. Well, hell, we got hit with a couple hard facts. You know, there, there is no E. coli that is confirmed. It is confirmed there is one TB case. Um, they did tell me yesterday. Um, Erie County Health did not report that. That came from New York City when I was talking with them and the, the patient is in the room and there are guards at the door to make sure the patient does not leave and the meals are being brought to the patient's room. It is not an outbreak, so there's no concern, I'm assuming, at the county level um, because it's one case. Um, and, and I'm only making that assumption because when we inquired with the county, we got the answer of, you know, if there is a, an immediate danger, we will take the lead and we are responsible for it. So we haven't heard anything outside of that. Um, from the county level, but um, to address your concerns about being residential and all that, I, I think it's fair to say that it, it's shared amongst many, you know, if not the whole town board, definitely our police and all that, um, and we've inquired that with DocGo, the lead agency in charge of this, and they are inquiring for a new location for those asylum seekers. Okay, okay. thank you for your time. Appreciate You're it. welcome. Okay, uh, Gary Borick. the fact that you only found out eight hours before but it's been what 45 almost 60 days 10 other communities four days four four days they got temporary restraining orders four days their council responded 45 we're still just getting to a resolution just authorizing looking into it again I'm not against I think we have room in our hearts and our wallets to help asylum seekers. I just don't think we can be the only community. I think we don't, cannot be put upon by the mayor of New York City to solve his problem. He could have asked, you know what, in the 
ton of salina cakes, half our size. Four days they got their TRO. And the judge, when he gave it, he said, look, I'm giving this as a temporary thing. I want you guys to sit down and figure this out. That's what he told the mayor of New York City. You can't just come in here. But I'm telling both sides to sit down and figure it out. That TRO is still in place as they work on it. That's where we should have been 45 to 60 days ago. I really want to mention something else, though. I want to talk about taxes. You know my favorite subject. <laughs> it's coming. We're going to have to make some decision on what we're going to do next year with reassessments. You're going to have to make that decision. But no matter what you do, the system has to be perceived as fair. We need some reforms. We need to allow people to make those applications by email. We need to change the requirement for the Board of Assessment Review to use the state form in making their decisions so that people are fully informed of what the Board of Assessment Review did. Because no matter what system you use, if the public doesn't perceive they have a fair chance in disputing the determinations made by the assessor, they're not going to accept the system as a whole. And there's going to be constant, constant complaints about it. And you don't have much time. We're in August. This was the time last year when you were told by the assessor was the decision date you had to make for the upcoming year. We're there. So you need to make that decision soon and you need to make those reforms. Thank you. Carmen Barker. Well, um, according to uh, everything that's going on with the uh, homeless or the asylums or the shelters, um, anywhere in Chituaga is not a good place to place these people at all. So even if it's Dingent, anywhere in Chituaga, we should not be providing that services. Um, with school coming up, uh, we need to definitely find out about vaccinating these uh, students entering school so we do not spread this because I hear uh, COVID is going up. Yeah, I heard that too. Um, one, with uh, talking about the, um, it was a disease or whatever going on, who's paying for the guard? To so DOTGO does have their own security company uh, that is part of this funding of housing and all that. So they're not Chicago police. They're not even a local agency, if I'm correct. Um, I didn't recognize the uniforms that the, that the polo shirts with their company brand on it. Um, but they are stationed at the hotel and they were also at the other hotels that I visited as well. Okay. I think the correct answer would be the taxpayers. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> Um, my other uh, issue that I have on my street, uh, Century, um, I brought up about um, trying to help us out with uh, traffic. Um, maybe this is not the time of year they're bringing it up, maybe the other time. Mm -hmm. um, I was interested in trying to see if we can look into, I know the town of Chicktawaka keeps seeing no bumpers. Something needs to be done on Century Road. Um, I know we had the timing done with the speed. Um, we had a sign letting the traffic know about the speed limit. Um, something needs to be done. I told uh, Detective Bogo, Bigo, I'm, I'm saying his name probably wrong. Um, he said that they've been using a resource, checking on the, you know, the speed and they've pulled people over. They've been doing the resource on our street, but there's still things that need to be done. Right now, with school being out, all the traffic is not over there a lot right now, but when school is, the traffic is terrible on our road. Um, also, we're trying to see if we can get the lines back on our street at Century and at the light of Century and Kensington. Um, they did the road over and we need a turning lane um, with the arrow. There's a straight and then there's one that's supposed to be an arrow for one. Um, there was one more thing. I can't think of the other thing right now, but right now is just hopefully we can look into something with the speed on Century, looking at the bumpers or some other solutions that something needs to be done. Also, there's a light out on our street, um, two lights. 
169 Century, and I think it's 158 Century Road. 169 and 158? Yes. There's a number on those polls that we'll need to report that to You can just do the address, really. They, they Thank know. you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Wally, you're next. Wally Carriero, Dick Road, Cheek Delaga. Wow, it's a good day for Lancaster, West Seneca, Amherst, everywhere but Cheek Delaga because overnight we became a sanctuary city. And you are the seven people that did it. Thank you very much. Um, there's a few other people I want to thank here. I want to thank Mr. Poland Cars, Wallace, Kennedy, Hochul, Higgins, Schumer, Gillibrand, and Joe Biden. And is it what's funny about this is nobody knows any of these people, but you, 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 her, and you are all in the same political party. And you know what I don't see? Any of them. I don't see any of them here. When these buses pulled up, did they bring a check for the school lunches? No. Who pays for that? Me. Did they bring a check for any of the auxiliary costs? Everything Mr. Gould talked about that he had to respond and address to came from my checkbook. It came from their checkbook. Mm -hmm. Are you sending invoices for the police response for the issues he had to deal with, or am I picking up that tab? I'm picking up that tab. We became a sanctuary city, and we are on the defense now when we should have been on the offense. Like Mr. Borick said, in four days you could have had a TRO. Where's the communication between the board and the whole level of government that went right up this hill? You guys look terrible to the residents. You look absolutely terrible because you know what? I'm just going to drop the garbage off in Cheektowaga and let them deal with it. They didn't go downtown. There's hotels downtown. There's hotels out on Transit Road in Lancaster. They didn't go there. They didn't go out to Amherst. They came here. <coughs> Bring them here, I say. Let's go and keep loading up our town with garbage. Because obviously the sanitation workers only work three or four hours a day. They have time to handle it, right? This is a problem because your town board doesn't enforce the codes of the town. We'd rather say okay and then see if there's a problem later. We got to start saying no and let them prove it. We can't say, well, you know what, you know, it was COVID, we let Hot Dog Heaven do their thing, and then Tim Hortons comes along and we can't stop the train now. We can't stop the train with the migrants. We can't stop the train no matter what. I live on Dick Road. There are two telephone poles in front of almost every house. And when is that going to come to an end, and when will the second poll be removed? Do you know what that looks like when people come to our town? We talk about, oh, we have an airport. Oh, we have a train station. Oh, we have this. Oh, we have that. It's all wonderful. Everybody comes to Cheektowaga, and then they drive down our streets. And what do they see? They see people that come to this meeting and complain about the services that you're not providing and is completely reactive when you do. Let's get proactive. Let's turn the town around, let's do our jobs, let's get on the phone, call those people up, let's get some money. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm um, sorry, next, um, Reverend Rick. I'm sorry, thank you, Wally. I put myself on the bottom because I wanted to hear what everybody had. I don't want to keep re reiterating what was being said. However, I was at the school board meeting last night. We got 22 kids who don't speak English coming to Maryvale. Who's paying for them? Who's paying for them? Us? Again? Does it take $10,000 per kid? So that's what? $220,000? Where's it going to come out of? And there is E. coli, and there is uh, one case of TB. You don't know that. You don't know what came on those buses. These people breathe it on everybody. 
How many more are, 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 are going to have it? How many more are going to come here? And like I said last night at the, at the school board meeting, the mayor of New York has no right to tell us who we take. And we're the only, uh, we're the only uh, county that said, no, we don't want them. Erie County, oh yeah, we'll take them. Why? Because they're all one party. I hate to say it's political, but you think about it, what you said, Mr. Kaminsky, it started in Washington. You got 6.2 million people came here. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they're carrying or whatever, including fentanyl, where our kids are dying. For one reason, it's nefarious that sooner or later, they're going to get licenses and they're going to vote. And guess who they're going to vote for? People better start waking up what's happening in our nation, what's happening in Chictawaga. All right, you started with this, continue with this. In 1912, my grandfather came over from Sicily, worked in the coal mines of Pennsylvania for a year before he could get his wife and baby over here. Worked. Worked. They're not doing nothing. They're just sitting there. They're just walking everywhere. On the way over here, I saw them walking on, on Dick Road with their phones. They got, their, they got a better cell phone than I got. What is going on here? We are the taxpayers. We are the taxpayers, and we are the residents. You're putting these people, our, our, our police officers, in harm's way because you don't know what we got here. We don't know what we have. So... I think what we need to do is get a meeting with your people, the governor, who used to be over here at one time, forgot what we had here, our state senate, our state assembly, and our Erie County people. What are you doing for us? What are you doing? What are you doing to this town? Because you're going to be liable for it. God forbid another rape, a murder, or, or an outbreak of something else because of what's happening here, and they bring it here in the cover of darkness. How nefarious is that? Thank you, Reverend. Uh, does anybody else wish to speak before we close this? Yes, ma'am, and sir, come sign the uh, sheet. Can you sign the sheet? Ma'am, I need you to sign that. Um, just sign it right here, because somebody went to the bottom. Yeah, um, yeah so we, if we want to get back to you, that would be good. <laughs> Thank you. Who else? Um, if you want, we should just speak. Can you come up and sign the sheet, and we'll let um, Yvonne, yes, speak, and um, he'll just sign the sheet. Anybody else? Go ahead, Yvonne. If you want to go. Ahead. Uh, my name is Yvonne Mazurkowitz. I live on Quad Drive, right down from the Best Western, or whatever it is now. Um, one thing I wanted to point out that I don't know if you are aware or if something you may want to look into, we did have one of them come approach my husband in her driveway last week. She had her husband and two kids in tow. On it, she had an envelope. She had written because they don't speak English. She was looking for the job. She pointed out to my husband, she was looking for the job, and she listed two addresses. She says she is at, staying at the airport hotel and the Best Western. So I don't know if they are rotating them, which I'm tending to think they are, because at first we had all just like 20 to 30 year old men. Now we have a lot of children, women and children, and, and some husbands or whatever, I'm assuming. Um, so that raises a question too for a school. I agree with everybody else. The kids need to be vaccinated if they're gonna be with our children, because if our kids have to be vaccinated, they should have to be vaccinated. And secondly, how can they possibly go to school if this woman has children in tow? And on her letter, she said she has seven children. She, is, she has seven children. She had two of them with her walking around. What school district are they going to be in if she's staying 30 days or how many days at the one on Genesee Street 
and Best Western. She listed both addresses on this envelope. So I just want you can send us that. We we need. The we answer. don't have it. No, she had it in, his, in her oh, hand. So do you have it on video? On our ring video? I have her, I have her visiting the. We won't have the paper, but oh, we do have her have visiting. Oh, a quick screenshot or like a. Yeah, so I just it. want to make sure you guys are aware that that photo. may be happening and maybe they're not telling you that either, which I wouldn't be surprised since they didn't tell you anything else. If, if so. we had that, somebody else had that situation too. They sent us the actual photo of the slip of paper she yeah, gave them. Yeah, no, we didn't have that, but I didn't, and I didn't hear anybody mention that, so I just thought mm -hmm. I'd bring that okay. to your attention. Thank you. Okay. Anything but though that happens again, please call the police right away. The phone number I gave well, like you. Like I said, and like everybody else said here, we're not heartless. We're no, not out no, no, no. But the anything, police but. want to get control of it, and we need to report back to yeah. this company and the New York City Mayor's office. So it's just to, so we have a record of it. Right. It's not getting anybody in trouble. Right. Yeah, like you said. You know, just, so because otherwise try not it looks to like, waste oh, our resources <laughs> on. Oh, this person just came up my driveway. It's no, like, you know, but. but it, I think it's just good if you could call. Yeah, but and I just didn't know if you were aware that I think that might be happening. Okay, so. thanks. Thank you. All right, and uh, we do have one other speaker then. From Helen Street. West. West, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Wesley. Thank you. Um, so my name is Wes Sloshin. I am a Chief Lager resident, uh, but I work with District Council for Painters and Allied Trades. We uh, have our offices on Arrow Drive, uh, right next to the National Weather Service, um, right there near the um, uh, air traffic control tower. So we train uh, commercial painters, drywall finishers, glazers, um, and, uh, and bridge and water tower painters. We have a training, uh, our center, training center of state of the art. And so we have grown over the years. Uh, we put an addition on in 2014, um, and we're proud of that. And we do a lot of events where we hold um, we train engineers and architects for their continuing education credits, and we have visions of holding public events, doing like paint uh, recycling events, and you know, kind of like uh, you know, uh, community nights on, on training uh, for painting and whatnot. So, anyways, we have a property next door that we've acquired, and we are, have a variance that we have um, put in last November. And so, I'm here to make a plea to ask what we can do to help expedite that process um, so we can get some. Wait a minute, you put answers. the um, variance application in, in last November? Yeah. In addition to, they reached out to me and I've also <clears throat> emailed that office to say, hey, what the heck's going on? And, and it, you still haven't gotten an answer? As of today, it seems like they have not yeah. still received an answer. Hmm. So, and, yeah. and, and, and it, it because we have, uh, we have to park all over the place along the access road. That long. And, yeah, I so I guess I'm just here to kind of. You know, Thank ask you for, for, sort of for some support on that. And if I'm correct, you're just looking to do a parking lot right now, right? Yeah, we just, that's all put, asking. We, we're just, we just need more, more parking space, that's all. So we just want to put a parking lot in. Have you contacted um, the built, uh, planning Young, and zoning Dan office? Young. Yeah, they, yeah, they have many times. And it hasn't been put on any zoning board of appeals meeting. Well, that's not so, good. If I can send you an email, we can yes, correspond yeah, on um, that. Could you um, send it? I don't, I don't know. I'll give you my card after the meeting. Of okay. course. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, we do have uh, a need for uh, an executive session to discuss the um, bargaining units of the Town of Chictawaga um, collective negotiations. Oh, sir, oh, okay. We're going back to the public comment period. Yes, sir, okay. Go ahead. Is it working? Yes. Yeah, we have one more speaker. Okay, go ahead. I was um, sitting here and hearing the other people's opinion on what was going on. And I've been taking into consideration a lot of the transition that's going on in the town with some of the other immigrants as homeowners now. I've been a town resident for 25 years. <clears throat> I tried to be open about the transition and people moving in for a better chance in their life. I dealt with chickens, 
gardens in the front and all sorts of other cultural things that I didn't quite understand. Um, right now I'm looking at the dilemma that we have concerning the uh, asylum seekers and the strain that is not only putting on our police department, regardless of who they say they hire, our police department is still in charge of what goes on in Chief Dewaga. I'm looking at our educational system. We have other non-English speaking people that's trying to adjust to our school system in English language now. Now we're adding on another problem with it. And the strain for the school system is going to get worse. I haven't heard anyone say anything about translators or any of that nature. The city of Buffalo school system went through the same thing some years ago. And when the school test scores dipped, it was because the students did not speak English. It wasn't that the city English speaking students wasn't learning. They had a large influx of immigrants that didn't speak the language, which brought down the test scores for everyone. What I'm concerned with, if the test scores in Chictawaga come down, how many opportunities will be given to our children here with test scores dipping? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I'm hearing about Dungeons, and I haven't heard much about Genesee Street. And you, you mentioned 260, was it? Somewhere around there. Isn't it about 500 immigrants oh, in this well, area no. right now? Um, the resident that emailed us had these specific questions to Dungeon Street, mm -hmm. the hotel there. Okay. So that's why I mentioned those properties. How many? asylum seekers are in the area right now. Okay, in Cheektowaga, it looks like there's a total of 573. So for clarity's sake, you just have 200 over on Dungeons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to be told that. Mm -hmm. And you're not telling us that. You, you sat there and you, you didn't mention it. No, I mentioned the Dungeon Street. Yes, you mm -hmm. did. And I just All got right. this information today. I just, I, I, I needed some clarity on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Not Thank a problem. You. I'd like to speak to this mm -hmm. gentleman's comment. Yes. So we talk about our education system here in Chictawaga. So New York State currently has close to 800 school districts. Some graphics will say that Chictawaga Central scores in math, science are in the bottom 50 percentile. So I agree with you. We're struggling with our children. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I um, need a motion to go into executive session to discuss the um, collective bargaining unit negotiations with all our unions. Um, Council Member Adams, act seconded by Council Member Polarski. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And after that, we will immediately.